Hey everybody, another question and answer. A very, very busy day today. The shop's been increasingly busy because now we're doing custom in-house. We're doing our custom work as well as the in-house classes. And I'm coming today from, just to give you an idea what my day was like today. And I'm not complaining because I'm working and I'm happy I'm working, trust me. Uh, so I woke up at 5, got, got to the shop at 6. I had to finish a wing chair before my class started at 9. We had a class come in at 9, and then uh, a break, you know, a little bit of a break, and then at 1 o'clock another class, 1 to 3 another class, and then a, a delivery to go on in uh, on my way here to the studio. So if you've watched us, you know that we have two places. We have a, a place where most of the work gets done in our studio here. The studio here is reserved for questions and answers, and I'm glad you guys are on. I hope you have a, we have a lot of things to take care of, but I do want to talk about a couple of things before I get started. And a little bit of a serious, on a serious note, um, you guys might have remembered a wing chair that we had. We were showing how, how to change the style of a wing chair a couple of questions and answers ago. So it was orange and it, a little orangey. And so it's taken it apart. I knew this chair came from a, <coughs> came from Newton, Massachusetts, where I first started in the upholstery business, and I recognized who upholstered this, this chair. Um, I can actually tell, um, we had a, a, a love seat a few weeks ago that we featured on one of our YouTube videos, where I recognized the style, and it was my mentor, and, and I, it, I know for sure it was his style, because I, I saw his handwriting was all over the back pieces of the fabric, so that was kind of exciting. So that puts that that's like a 50 or 50 year old uh, piece of furniture that my mentor had upholstered and he he was uh in his i think 70s at the time so that that piece his his skill set went back another you know 50 years from there so we're talking a, a span of about 100 years so it's pretty interesting but this chair was very special to me today when i was taking it apart uh or this was yesterday I was taking it apart. It was all done by with tacks, all spit tacks, all hand stitched. And I knew that this man was, his name was Leo. And Leo was a survivor from uh, World, War, World War II. He was a Jewish survivor from the camp. Specifically, he was at Auschwitz. And he's long deceased now. And I, I think I could talk somewhat freely about him with his first name. But I did want to mention this. He was quite a craftsman. And he was a survivor from from that camp, from that death camp. He he was a, a, a really wonderful guy, uh, really good tradesperson. And and I could I, you know I was taking it apart. I was kind of emotional taking this apart, thinking about him and what he had been through, and how he had to survive. And I, I won't go too deep into it. But near the end of his life, I think he passed in the late '80s. I want to say, but he did a, an interview with a local uh, paper um, and. And um, I just won't go into any of the details. It was as horrendous as you can think um, about what Auschwitz might have been like. It was for him and for him to survive what he had to do. And he was a trait. The reason he survived, I will tell you this, is that he was a he was a uh, tailor also. He was a very good needle artist. I would call him a needle artist because he, he, he could do a lot of things under that umbrella. But um, he, he was... Um, an example of a survivor, and he, he lived and worked in, in Newton for a long time in a place, a small little shop. I, I didn't actually work under him, I just, I would visit him and we would get some supplies from him. I, I worked in a shop across the street, but I just wanted to mention that, um, kind of a kind of a serious, not a serious note, but, um, you know, he was one of my mentors, I would call him a mentor, um, um, I would look up to him, but anyhow. That's, that's that, and um, I'm going to be upholstering that, which I'm kind of excited about that too, that I'm going to be you know, using some newer techniques. I'm not going to be spitting tacks. I was just admiring his fortitude um, and the fortitude of, of the old upholsterers who would only spit tacks. I started spitting tacks. I can spit tacks if I have to, but let me tell you something. That is a labor-intensive. Um, that is labor-intensive. So that said... <clears throat> So we learn a lot about history too, I guess, uh, in upholstery. Uh, so uh, we're going to start with um, our YouTube uh, questions. Jimmy also, uh, I, I try to get Jimmy. Patrick, I haven't. I forgot to ask him about today if he uh, wanted to no, come. He's been very busy. I know that. Yeah. Well, I, I will mention. You know, Jimmy. Jimmy is a 
a uh, boss in one of the local, uh, you know, transit. Uh, I think he's mentioned the transit system. <laughs> you guys could fill in the blanks. And he's like Sir Topham Hat. I'm from yeah. From Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, he yeah, he's got that humor too. But <laughs> but you know this, they've been having trouble with the Orange Line here in in Massachusetts in the United States. They've had some problems like over the summer. There was a, 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 nobody was hurt in this, but there was a fire on one of the trains over one, over one of the bridges, which is a, not a big high bridge, it's a low bridge. And uh, one of the people <laughs> jumped, a girl jumped into the river, the Charles River to avoid the, it wasn't really serious enough to, for her to do that, <laughs> but she what? did. She jumped into the river and swam to shore and there was a police boat there and the police boat offered to take her, you know, take her in the boat. She said, no, I've had enough drama. She, she swam to the shore. I just, I don't think they ever got her name. But So they've been having trouble with the orange line. And so uh, last week, I, I, I couldn't believe, I saw, now these are trolleys. They have tracks that they go on, right? This is the nature of, a, of the orange line. That's what they do. They go on tracks. But I, I swear this is true. I woke up and I, I put in the news and I saw an orange line car, car on 495 on a highway. Yeah. It was, that's probably about 30 miles away from any tracks whatsoever. And it was on the highway. <laughs> How did it get on the highway? Well, I guess they were taking it on a trailer and the tra it fell off the trail or something. But that's crazy. So was Jimmy dispatched for that, for that incident? No, Jimmy said they just so can't win. <laughs> they <laughs> just can't. You know, that's, that's publicity you don't probably want, I guess. Anyhow. Um, so let's that's get, where he's been. Yeah. <laughs> so questions and answers, you guys. Yeah, so we're, we have so many. That, uh, that, what, that live now? There. No, that, of the Facebook forum. Well, let's get, let's get the YouTubes yeah, yeah, out of the so way. so many. I know people have, sorry, you've been waiting. How to convert a caning to upholstery is the first YouTube. It's Mary Ellen. It's hard to find videos on fixing up chairs like this one. You're doing the, you're doing in the video. I have six 1900s tea back dining chairs. They were redone at some point with webbing, vinyl, gimp, and tacks. Would it be nuts to do the webbing, burlap, and then leather over it and leave out the stuffing? Trying to keep the antique feel and natural products. No vinyl or fiberboard. Well, I think that question is an aesthetics question and, and um, a scale question, you know, to, to scale. I think about what, the, what this, I, I, don't, I don't see a picture of what she's talking about, but uh, sometimes pieces of furniture do not have to be over, overstuffed or over upholstered. So um, sometimes we do, I have a few students that have very thin back chairs and very substantial seats, for instance. That's, that's like a Victorian era thing where people didn't lean back on furniture and you didn't need a back. Uh, people didn't, they perched. So um, this sounds like it's, I, I think she can do that. I think Mary Ellen is, uh, I don't know if she's been somebody that's taken um, the class, Patrick, online, I don't think so, but she should go on the Facebook forum if she wants more. And we're gonna get to a lot of that, right? Yeah. So <laughs> this is a funny story on this next one, this hand stitching a panel arm. You know, we've done so many of these videos, uh, I don't remember the video, never mind what I said in the video. Nah, so when I, when I saw this, I said, oh, she's not, I, I assume she's Tink on here a lot. No, it's Tinkerbell, a, yeah, you'll, you'll like this story. So Tinkerbell, I don't know if she, it's a she, I, I shouldn't assume anything, I, uh, right, Patrick? <laughs> Tinkerbell says, uh, where did you get your license? A Cracker Jack box? So, yeah, and, he, and as I, you know, he was insulted by that. I thought... And had no idea I, that I, he it came out of his own mouth. I thought... I thought... I said, Tinkerbell <laughs> said that. I, I knew it right away. Because something... Patrick remembered it. Patrick remembered I didn't remember that. So I think you owe, owe her an apology. And she said... <laughs> no, it was just briefly. I yeah, I think you... Uh, <laughs> The other one that wants to he race. Said, oh, he go on there and delete it. I, I can't <laughs> believe it. I said uh, that was you who said. <laughs> so that's uh, the danger of saying all these things, Dad. You don't know, forget. Well, what she said. says she loves the ramblings, and that's what it was—a yeah, rambling. It was a I don't know what I yeah. what I was referring to in that video and well, how she's it, laughing now. I think is she? Fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for another info. We didn't lose a fan. <laughs> Can you unsubscribe from somebody? Yes, you can. Oh, you can. Have yeah, we, how many have unsubscribed? We've got twenty. I actually unsubscribe from you now. You son of. 
All right, Michaela's in the back. She's going to be coming out at some point, but she she's going to be uh, reading some. We, we've got a little pickup in the business with some emails, but she'll be coming out. I think we're getting into the spring rush. Right. So thanks, Tinkerbell. She has another one from the very first recliner ever made, question mark. <coughs> Restoration part two. Such an interesting project. Where did you get your license? In a Cracker Jack box? No, I'm uh, just again? <laughs> <laughs> <Can't win. laughs> But I'm surprised that the original upholsterer didn't try to pattern match some of the pieces as they were as there was the extra fabric that you used to reupholster. I'm not sure what she means by that, but um, Patterns are funny, you know, sometimes people, it's up to the upholsterer, uh, you know, like today we had, we had a pinstripe herringbone, or not a not pinstripe, a small herringbone pattern, it's, it's less than an inch, but it has the, you know, when a herringbone has, uh, you know, it goes up and it goes down, that's the pattern, that's what makes the herringbone, it, you know, the points up, points down. So, um, in a way, this was how, this is going to be a more difficult job for this um, this student because a small st pattern like that we're taking the time and, other, and what, what I'm saying is we're taking the time to match that to the inside back and the outside back so but but it, it really is up that would be up to the her I think she picked the point up on the herringbone which is fine can you do either one um, although one looked more vibrant than the other so I would pick the more vibrant one if I were her but I think she picked the less vibrant one which is fine but um, patterns, to, the point is, patterns are up to the upholsterer, and uh, most clients don't have a clue, but I'll tell you one thing, if you put a pattern on uh, that doesn't make sense or that you didn't pay attention to some type of uniformity, they will notice. I mean, the idea of an upholsterer, like a fine work of art, uh, would be that your eye uh, from the from the floor up and from side to side just kind of flows. Your eye flows over really good art like that. Like Michelangelo's David. Is Mike, uh, Michaela? Michelangelo's David, right? I believe so. She doesn't like art history. Uh, I know, but, but David, the statue is... What's that? I'm pretty sure that's correct. So, so your eye doesn't stop. At, it, it flows over nice art. It's the same thing with upholstery and anything else, I guess. Uh, that... that uh, but with patterns, your you, eye just wants to flow. So sometimes you either, um, you're, you're flowing. Uh, let's say you have a floral with a vine in it. You have multi-floral with vines in it, for instance. Sometimes it's, 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 if it makes sense, it makes sense sometimes on a big pattern to match the vine in the background and to, and to not center it, but to, you know, from the inside back to the seat or the cushion. It, it, it makes sense to go with the vine in the background, believe it or not. Or centering, let's say, the, the primary pattern in, in a floral with vines is not necessarily the idea, a good idea, although some fabrics it would be, like in a geometric or something, it would be. It depends on the fabric and the piece of furniture. So with, with, with patterns, you're actually measuring, you know, you're measuring that up to see what would, in your mind's eye, what would look better. And then you might want to cut some pieces off and actually test it to, before you actually commit to cutting the whole job. And then you have to anticipate things, uh, certain things on a big job, how it's going to look uh, overall. You know, that's another concern. So we have um, a very, I, I didn't tell you guys, a very, very motivated student who's taken the class, who's insisting on using all old methods. Speaking of tax, she's, she's not spitting tax. I don't recommend that, actually. She's, she's using tax, though, on a, on a small chair, and she's asking these really pointed questions. As it turns out, she's a designer and she's also a writer, so she's thinking about writing a book about design in upholstery, So, which I find that interesting because we do need we do need more books, and there's not many books out there on upholstery, right, Patrick? Um, we have one. I was telling him about mine, but it's a real, it's a real raw. Yours is more. Not, I wouldn't call it a book. It's more of a guide. A guide. A guide. Yeah. It's 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 a it's almost like, what do they call it, Patrick? Uh, when a mechanic has a has a book that they catalog? go catalog. Cat, not a catalog, but you know, how to. How to yes. Well, it's meant to be. Not meant to be a million pages. It's but what she's right. But what she's doing, because she's a really good, she's a professional writer and a professional designer, and now she's taking this class, 
and she works for a major publication. I won't mention it because I don't think that's proper. That would be up to her to tell me that I could do it. I haven't even told her. I won't mention her name. But um, I find it very interesting what she's doing. And she's a real study. And, and this is really good. I mean, a real study. So with her, I'll, um, because and she's it's not a big class, I can go into a little bit more detail with her. And I, uh, you know, and it's interesting just, you know, some people just don't want to hear all the details. And we get that once in a while with the YouTube, right, Patrick? Yeah. Say, I wish this guy would just shut up. Patrick said, just put it on mute. <laughs> right, Patrick? Yeah. All right, let's go to the next page. We're going to be here all night if I don't get moving, right? Yeah, we got uh, lots of submissions on the forum. Fixing a pop button for free. Thank you so much. That was from Maureen. We got a lot of feedback on that one. People have saved. I would say, Patrick, if I had to guess... All the people who have used that method probably have saved ten thousand yeah. uh, dollars. You know, combine them all together, right? Erica's checking in for the first time in a long time. Hey, Erica, she what's says, going on? Um, she's she's hopping in. <laughs> I've been busy with my channel, so I don't know. I think she should post. You're kidding. Whatever, yeah. Her ch well, her channel is obviously her name here. You're so kidding. I'm, I'm mama, yeah. Oh, Eric, so congratulations. When are you going to start I teaching? Have, I, I'll check it out after we yeah. see what she posted. But, That's um, great, Erica. She's been doing home remodel. I just finished it and I get back to the studio as soon as I can with projects. So. Isn't that great? That's great. I wish you much she luck. like Jimmy with all these different things going on. Yeah, much success on that. I think she's she would be a natural. You know, she would really be good. So Mary Kay, The Upholstery Show Live. I've been out of town and out of context, so just catching up. Thanks for the praise on my rocking chair. I usually appreciate the support and advice. Actually, is Mary Kay listening right now, Patrick? I'm not sure. Pam, Bo Pam Bowen is checking. Hi, there. Pam. All our, all our uh, followers from a few years ago are coming in. That's great. Um, well, I will mention to Mary Kay because it's obvious that she might watch no, this. Not, oh, no, she might watch it later. That. We have had some shortages in the upholstery business right now. The rubberized horse hair is on back order. I checked today. Uh, my supplier tells me uh, very soon, maybe the first week in March now for this. And we've got a couple other people waiting for that, including me. I'm waiting for my own. So, Mary Kay, if you're listening, I have I have your webbing and I have your tax. She put an order in, you guys. So that's another thing I wanted to mention. If you want, go on Upholstery on Broadway and check out, our, uh, check out the website to see what we have on there for online classes and also for supplies. Thank you, Mary Kay. Mary Kay's been a really good supporter. And she's um, off on her own little DIY stuff. And she actually, Mary Kay, took the real big step of buying the kit. Oh, she is here. Hi, Mary Kay. I just got through telling if she just checked out, checked in. The rubberized horse is on its way. And then we'll complete your order. We'll let you know. That's interesting how that, why that? Do you know why? I have why? no idea. So, Mary Kay, I uh, just wanted to thank you for your support. We'll talk about the support. Tinkerbell again. Thanks, Tinkerbell. Sorry, um, she says, um, where did you get your license in a crack? Oh, my God. <laughs> Three times you've worn it out. You've worn it out. <laughs> I knew you'd get a kick out of that, Patrick. How to upholster... That's great. That's the new coconut hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they say you can't self-efface more than three times because then your audience starts feeling sorry for you. <laughs> That's what they tell comics. Three times in, the, in your routine... And then after that, they, the audience, you don't want an audience to feel sorry for you, right, Patrick? Go tell that to Jimmy. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, I got to get him back in the studio. People have been asking him. He'll be back him. soon. He's gonna, his next project is uh, coming up. So That's Tinkerbell great. says, first, a well-deserved thank you for sharing your time and expertise. Why not use synthetic burlap over the webbing? Would you explain the downside to that? I have a great reason why you don't want to use synthetic webbing, uh, burlap, or webbing, or spring t t tying twine. The only leather that I, I mean, nylon that I use as a twine is the tufting twine. That definitely, I don't like the cotton. I like the nylon on that, definitely, because it's strong or last. And the application is different than the other applications, which... Basically, what you're going to get is, is a squeak. And um, it doesn't matter what, how good of a job you've done. If somebody hears a squeak, that's associated with a poor job when they sit down. So I hope you guys out there check your furniture every, that you do. Sit on your furniture as you're doing it to make sure that there's no squeaking because there are remedies to that. But if you've webbed, if you've webbed with the nylon 
and and then upholstered with the nylon over that um, with uh, and used it for burlap. Uh, by the time you get into the top cover, it might, it might be a little, it might be a problem, right? So um, definitely the, the, the jute is the best way to go for these type of things. She's got some good questions, Patrick. Take yeah, it she does. Um, Erica says, the channel is not about upholstery. Oh. But they're taking on some trolls. Troll. Everyone gets the trolls. <laughs> 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 um. What does she do about the trolls? Um, <laughs> taking them on, so... <laughs> I, I wouldn't mess with Erica. You don't mess with an upholsterer. One time an upholsterer did, tried to mess with me. Yeah, Jack the Ripper. What happened to that? Well, <laughs> they say you guys. They, they say Jack the Ripper was an upholsterer. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> but one time an upholsterer who didn't like me for some reason. Gee, who wouldn't like me? Right, Patrick? Who could find like you? It's not true what my mother said. That it, who could not like him? <laughs> but this upholsterer did not like me. He had reasons not to like me. Um, uh, so so he was shaking hands and he was squeezing my hand and I was squeezing his hand. He was squeezing my hand and I was squeezing his hand. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, you forget you're, you're, you're shaking the hand of a fellow upholsterer. So you have to squeeze a little harder than that. <laughs> Our hands, in other words, our hands, we have really good hand strength, Patrick. And and uh, you need that, right? It's like the handshake from Predator. Remember Schwarzenegger and that other guy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so making a rollover arm caps. I bought a used couch off Facebook. This is from Leah. Marketplace to reupholster. It was these weird arms, and I hate them. I prefer the pleated method with the faceplate. I am tempted to restructure the arms so they are square, rectangular with added height so they are in line with the back. Wish me luck. <laughs> well, she'll do it. I mean, if you if you could persevere, I think perseverance is a really important important thing. Um, I've had jobs. I just had a job. It was a mid-century job with a latex. Patrick, you you and Michaela have experience with this. Remember maybe how you had to chisel the latex off the frames? You did, you guys yeah, did that messy. on something. Messy and, and a lot of work. And so, I mean, you just really have to persevere through some of the things. Um, that's, that's, that's a lot of upholstering, I think. So, Zilval, I like that name, Zilval. I wonder where that name comes from. How to upholster outside back at dining room chairs. He says, I like, I like it. Ashley says, I, um, fixing a pop button. I, I just tried your hack with, with the washer and plies, and it worked like a charm. Thanks. <laughs> I love that one too, Patrick, because nobody, you don't, you can take the tools out of your kitchen drawer. Man. Most people have a kitchen drawer. Yeah, you gotta do more of those. There's gotta be some more hacks we can do. Well, I'll have to think about it because that, that was, that was an unusual one. Oh, you, you better update people than I thought of it. What? Previous videos. Update everybody on the, uh, the ribbon, ribbon chair. Yeah. Oh, man. What with that? Yeah, you guys. So this is going to be a part two, unfortunately. So this ribbon jet, um, the problem with it, I don't think I have the fabric here. Um, so what would they head on was a dressmaker fabric. Michaela, do you know what dressmaker fabric is? No. Dressmaker fabric stretches a mile. It's like elastic. And, and they use it in, or theater fabric. Some people call it theater fabric, Patrick. They use it in the, in the theater. Oh. And the idea is that it, it, you can upholster something really quick with this stuff. From far away, it looks like it's been like completely upholstered by a professional. Yeah. Like in a darkened staged uh, stage, um, they could take, they could change out. It's really cool in a way. You, you, they could change out a whole set in a matter of minutes with this stuff because it stretches so much. And they just tie it in the back or pin it in the back and they're done. And nobody, I mean, from the first row, back it looks like it's been it's upholstered it's it's really cool and um so that's what it was on there and and it went from that to i thought michaela that fabric was going to work great and it did it looked good didn't it but what a tremendous amount of work it was because it didn't have any of the stretch that the first fabric had and so we struggled, and I didn't want to show that on you. I'm sorry, I didn't want to show that. <laughs> I said do it anyway. No, it was just that would have been way too much pressure. I and it took so long. You wouldn't have liked it, Patrick, because it took so long. Do uh, come up with a new idea for the next video. Yeah, well, I have I have one coming up. Actually, you know what? We'll announce it now. I want to do a 
I'm going to show people how to stuff a horsehair cushion, which I haven't done in almost f from the very beginning of my work work in, in upholstery 40 over 40 years ago. Uh, I was going to show people how to how to stuff a horsehair cushion. I had a client. Oh yeah, and I, that was the first time in a long time somebody came in right yeah. and got actual horsehair. First hair. time that a customer even knew about it. I mean, most people don't know that horsehair is even used in upholstery. Most customers yeah they wanted to keep it she wanted to because her mother uh, had one on this piece originally and then they changed it out to foam you guys don't ever do that if you have a customer that has a that has a horsehair cushion tr don't don't do that keep it and convince the customer to keep it sometimes they might rationalize that they don't want to use it but you know please you know, try to keep as much of the original as you can Look out for that soon. Ashley says, I just... Uh, one second, I just want to say something. Thank you to Erica. She just purchased the uh, new class membership pack. Oh, thank you, Erica. So thank she, you. So we got Jimmy's shell back up there now. His wing back's coming soon. And then Michaela has a new one. And then Jimmy has a, another one coming up. Well, you know, Jimmy needs a fan club. So, Erica, if you want to... And you, you're a good supporter of fan, but we want it to expand Jimmy's fan base from that do wagging dog... <laughs> I, can't, one I, can't even, I, can't, I can't even get it out. But Jimmy had a great, great fan. Got it, Patrick? Yeah, a yeah. great Dane. A great Dane fan. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I should tell the story now. I know Erica does. but hey, Randy. I'm, Randy. Randy's heard the story. But one day we were filming down in Arlington, which is a busier place than here, and it's a storefront. And we usually put a, we put a signs up. Remember the sign we put out filming in progress yeah, down there, yeah. Patrick? And we had we drew the, the shade. And Jimmy's in there. And we're, we're doing a uh, live question and answer. I think it, Was it a question and answer, Patrick? Or was it a video? No, uh, I forget. I think we might have been doing a class at the time. Well, it was being filmed, though. It yeah, was being we filmed. Yeah, filming a class. And early in the day, this person came by with this huge Great Dane. To, there's a barber shop next to me. And I looked I, I looked down, and the... And the the dog was wagging its big tail and it was going up against the, the door and it sounded like somebody was knocking on the door. It was like bang, bang, like like that, right? That was early in the day, so Jimmy comes and uh, I hear the same noise and I, and I said, Jimmy, your fan, Jimmy, I think Jimmy said, that's one of my fans. <laughs> I went over, and I lifted the curtain and there's the dog. <laughs> Anyhow, you can't make this stuff up. Jimmy, Jimmy's a hot ticket. He brings this stuff with him, right? Is he on there, by the way? No, not even. Won't even check in. Oh boy. <laughs> Do you know what a do doppelhanger is? I think. Dopp it's doppelganger. Doppelganger. I know what that yeah. is. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Well, look alike. Th this guy Paul says, "Oh I my." I see his pictures. So I don't know. Yeah, he do he doesn't <laughs> post his picture. Oh no, his picture's here. Is it? Does it look like you? He's kind of ugly. <laughs> oh, jeez. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> He says, and I'm an he says, he's an upholsterer too. Well, you know, there's there's a there's a twin for everybody, Patrick. Even you. Now you got another troll. You're gonna be offended by that. Oh no, I didn't mean anything bad by it. Where'd you get your crew? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get your license? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a A Lovelace, uh, crate and barrel fitted pa panel arm. Great demo. Thank you. That thank you. And is is there any questions, Patrick? Comments? Uh, talk, uh, a couple of people are talking about do a French mattress video. Now, I don't know if that would be your. Uh, I think I think if you're gonna when you see what I do with this cushion, it's it's like that. It's like a it's like a mattresses. Yeah, it's definitely. I'm gonna be using um, tufting. I'm gonna be using the blanket stitch, um, a machine stitch. Um, the materials I'm going to be using are the, are the horse hair, but filling the horse hair cushion will be interesting for people how we do that. And then the tufting is used uh, on the interior of the cushion to uh, kind of keep it all together. That's how we, that's the stitching that we do. At least this is how I do it. So somebody, you know, in Europe might look at this and say, that's not how we do it here in Europe. But, you know, it's how I was taught by European transplants. So that's all I can say. Whether or not you know, that's what I like about upholstery, actually. You look at, for example, spring tying. Spring tying, I, I can remember the arguments uh, in this shop, because it was a rather large shop when I first started, and people would be arguing with each other about how to properly tie springs. 
and they'd be fighting over it. And, and uh, one of the guys said, what difference does it make as long as the end result is you have eight ways, uh, eight ties on a spring and standing stationary and it's not, it's, it's not moving, it's doing what it's supposed to do and it's crowning where it's supposed to be crowning, etc., etc., etc. And he was right. Um, I felt he was right. So, but but the signature in the knots, there's there's the, some people do a crossover knot. I I will do a like what we call a granny knot. Um, I like to sometimes maybe I do a combination of the two sometimes if there's a lot of twine if there's a lot of springs. Um, but I'll put the 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 closed knot on the outside of the spring work and the and the crossover on the inside. As long as you're using the, the ruby twine, your crossovers will work. Don't you can't do it with the nylon, and even a knot on the nylon twine. I've I've taken furniture apart, high end furniture, that they advertise as eight way hand tied. They use the nylon. The nylon, the nylon uh, uh, is slipping almost. 45 degree angle it's crazy it, it doesn't hold it's not a good thing to use and i see it so much in, in um, manufactured furniture even high-end furniture where there's a lot it's not their fault i don't blame them um i think there's a lot lost in the transition uh translation whatever you want to call it um between old methods old old proven methods and the newer methods there's, there's a gap there but anyhow celestra and cambric what goes over the webbing before foam is laid on top? What goes over the webbing before foam? Well, I think they mean um, they mean burlap. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what they mean there. Uh, webbing is at the bottom, and and um, you know springs go on the webbing and uh, or foam, whatever. Um, I would say burlap to that to that. Um, Sandy says, absolutely saved me. This is about stuffing a cushion cheaply and effectively. That's the key there, Patrick. You can be cheap, but you can also be effective. And I think what I was showing there was when you introduce another material onto whether it be down or foam or whatever. Um, <laughs> Randy posted something funny. Why don't you want to read it before I go? Discussing on. spring tying is like discussing politics and religion. Great way to start a fight. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. That's true. That video is controversial. It's, yeah. Everyone says, oh, I'll do them. They have their own way, it seems, to do yeah. it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like that. Randy's right. So, absolutely saved me after s scraping my hands and arms. I saw your video about wrapping in plastic and sucking air from the cushion. Fantastic idea. Thank you so much. See, I'm not, I'm not sure what that. I know. I mean, I've forgotten. We've done a couple of those. I'm not sure what she means, but okay. Now we're off to uh, Facebook. We got a lot of Facebook. This one's cool uh, from Jamie. Jamie, um, second chair done, and he was on Facebook talking about uh, tufting. And I have a I have a student in my class who uh, it's she's six classes in. I do eight classes. We do. Um, uh, two hour classes and we 15 minutes before the two hours is up we clean up I insist people clean up and we cut out 10 sometimes it goes to 10 minutes but I need you know we need to we need to because we're doing a custom shop I'm changing the shop out right afterwards but so we need to kind of stick to that schedule but she's in class six today she's got a bedroom chair that's hand tufted on the back she's got a, a really lightweight cotton cloth fabric we've got the seat on and we've got two arms on and she's about to start the back and the back's gonna she's not gonna finish this chair people do this all the time they take the class and i try to i try to warn people but it never seems to never seems to sink in sometimes but she knows she's not going to finish the chair because she's not even doing the tufting and she's got about 20 buttons those, those take some time they're not i wouldn't say tufting is technically Hard. I think the way I teach it, um, I think I have an easier way of teaching it. I think it's just labor intensive. I, I really do believe it's labor intensive. Once you get the basics of down, that each button has to have four pleats in the interior at least. The exterior is different. In the interior, you have uh, that's what makes the diamond. You have four pleats coming into a, a, a button, and they're all all the pleats need to be down. You know, you don't want to fold it up pleat. So that's pretty that's pretty basic, and you want to try to plot out, you know, with your with your fingers, plot out the rest of the button, so project, you know, projecting away from the button that you're working, do you know what I mean? That's kind of, 
And I have a technique with students. I don't have them do the button. You know, the button is later. They do the they do the twines first. So if you guys are teaching the class, or if you if you're wanting to do tufting, what you want to do is take a button needle, and and you can take a nylon twine. If you have a fabric that usually you could just knot the end of a nylon twine out and run run that through to get to get pulled and to get your pleats. I would suggest that you do that, especially for beginners, uh, before you commit to the button. I mean, you could do the buttons and then pop a button later if you have to and adjust it. That happens even to the professional upholsterers. So it never, never is perfect the first time. Uh, and depends on how fussy you are. I'm very fussy. I'll go back. This is where patience really comes in when you're doing tufting. You really have to have patience. But I want to show you. Do you, know, do you have Jamie's chair up there, Patrick? No, I don't. Show it on the table. But he's doing an East Lake rocker. And that's really nice. I think the change. I think I saw that. Can you see it, Patrick? I think I saw that with the tufting, and I, I like it better without the tufting. A little closer. And he's got a very busy fabric, so who misses tufting on a busy fabric? The reason tufting was invented by upholsters, which I'll take credit for that, the industry, um, is to enhance a bland fabric world. There weren't many, many fabrics that looked like that, so we, we enhanced it by our techniques. So Allison, uh, she says, hi again, quick question for your wise upholstery friends she's asking the the community here which i if you guys are watching if you haven't gone on to facebook uh, broadway patrick broadway upholstery at broadway facebook upholstery School Forum, yeah. guys should check it out <clears throat> i mean we, we get a i really have to chime in um, i do occasionally you'll see that patrick but i um uh, other people on there like randy and, and other people like him that have been doing upholstery They'll, and I, I appreciate that because we've got a ton of work to do. They were still always going to answer it on here. Right? right. Allison says, hi again. Quick question for your wise upholstery friends. The entire frame of the seat was covered with fabric, and I plan to do the same. It seems like in this instance it would make sense to use Daquan as I have a smooth surface and staple it to the underside of the frame. If I use Daquan, would you add a layer of cotton to the seat? And if so, above or below the Daquan? Thanks in advance. First of all, I'll stop it right away. You don't, you never take batting of any type and bring it around to the bottom. Listen to me carefully. You never always staple towards the bottom of the frame, like right in here, not, not the bottom of the chair. Why is that? Because you take away this nice crisp line. Look how nice that is, that serpentine curve. This is serpentine. This, this, I mean, the whole chair has just got beautiful lines. So if you take da even Dacron, cotton would be worse. Take it over that. You're going to take your line away, and then you're going to have a problem with your fabric. It's going to be pull marks where you staple and things like that. Transition lines are huge in upholstery. That's another thing manufacturers don't know. She's asking what to use. What I would use, she can use maybe, um, I mean, she could go traditional methods, which people don't do because of cost, I would say. She could do a cotton, and then maybe a one inch piece of foam. The one inch piece of foam gets stapled right about here, or half of an inch piece of foam. And then over that piece of Daycron would be a good idea, but make sure you're, you're stapling right along here, okay? Trim it with your, uh, I hate to use scissors to trim Daycron, but you're gonna have to. Trim it along here, along the edge, so you keep that edge. So the only thing coming over is a slight, a little bit of the day crunch coming over the edge. That's it. If you were using cotton, you'd be feathering, and and just the feathering part of the cotton would be coming over the edge. Does that make sense? And the next one is from Dorothy Preston. I started working on some dining chairs while I am waiting for the fabric for my wing chair. My question is this: the back of the chair is a thin piece of wood that is falling apart. Should I replace the wood or just use webbing um, on the backing? Webbing is much better to use, you guys, much better. So when you have a curve like that, you want to make sure that you do your webbing. She has a slight curve, a slight curve. But uh, wood is, I very rarely have seen wood used on an inside back like that. I think Randy and, uh, and Erica and all you guys would agree. If you've ever seen wood on an inside back like that, it has to be webbing and burlap. So you put three pieces maybe of webbing up and down. And if it is curved, you may make, make sure that you only hands uh, tighten it side to side the webbing. You could do two or three webbing side to side, but don't pull those too tight. 
all your attention comes up and down from the bottom to up is the tension specifically and the burlap and then it looks like maybe a one inch piece of foam etc so you you know I, I I like the natural um, traditional way of doing things this was a good one Sarah I, I don't know if she's she um, she says does anyone have tips on stretching fold Velvet on a curved back chair. Would it help if I had Daquan on the foam? I don't understand why it's being so difficult. I also minimum stretch, if any. Is there a, is that a factor? So what I recommended here, you guys, you can go on the Facebook to see. But so what I recommended for her was she needs to pattern this and sew and sew a stretch on the bottom. But it would be good if she what she does is she traces along here. She's already got it in place really to be able to stretch. I mean, to, to chalk on the bottom, take this off, cut a half an inch from that chalk line, sew a piping, and then sew a pleated stretcher on, on here. What that will do is pull out, um, you, 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 you get the strength enough with the pleat to pull it. You know, it should be a pin tacking up here, pull it down, pin tack again up here, stretched up. I'm sure she'll, she'll get that on, because it's not, really, when you look at this, it's not a dramatic curve at all. But it's enough of a curve to cause a problem when you don't do the stretcher. So that's my tip on that one. Oh, we're getting some good tips here, you guys. And then, um, before I go on, Pat, is any questions, comments, or anything? Yes, from Pam. Why don't you read that? So I've done a couple of French tufted mattresses. I'm still trying to determine how much, how much shrinkage to account for. All the tufting is made to fit a specific surface. Yeah, that's a good question. So, to me, when you're doing any type of mattress, if you've noticed... I don't even know what is that. What's a French mattress? What is well, she's referring to a French mattress. I just... I, you know, what I visualize when she's talking is a, is one of those pinstripe fabrics that we use for mattresses, oh, Patrick. Right. You've seen that, right? Yes. That you've seen that on box springs and the like. But with the with the, with the, with the horse hair that you use, and, and, and you're not talking springs on this. It's not the box spring. It's the mattress that sits on top. Um, so with the horse hair, uh, the thing about it, Pam, Pam, is that you're not pulling that, it's not tufted like a, like the inside back of a Victorian sofa. It's a very subtle, it's a, you, you're still using your slip knot. Some people use a ball of cotton. Some people use a flat, like, uh, tie of, out of fabric, like a, um, one or maybe a one inch or one and a half inch and folded piece of fabric um, um, for that for the let's say for their button. Um, it's you don't use buttons because be, why don't you use buttons and why don't I like to use the cotton is because both of those things you can fill through the uh, the cover that you're putting on. So um, or the other covers. So what I like to use I do I like to use the um, the fabric uh, for my buttons. And the reason I do is because that uh, cotton balls up too much for me. And they, they used to use cotton a lot. Um, and, and the thing, I don't think there's much um, consideration for the tufting at all um, in when you're cutting it out. I mean, I might cut it instead of a half inch, maybe an inch bigger, maybe. No, um, maybe take out some allowance. It depends on if it's a queen. It depends on the size, too. But keep in mind when you're tufting it, and you know you're probably going to space out the the uh, the buttons probably about every six eight inches or so. You're not pulling it tight. You don't want to pull it tight. You don't want to create these divots. Remember, I think to me, the reason you're doing the buttons with um, the reason you're doing the the tufting is to stabilize the horse hair. That's it. You're not you're not you're not making a, a bold statement with a with the recessed uh, diamond tufting. You know that's not what we're doing. So I don't think there's a lot of, I don't think there's too much concern there when you're cutting it out. I almost want to say that I don't think there's any concern, really. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference at all um, if you're not pulling it tight. You don't want to pull it tight. The reason you don't want to pull it tight is because you're going to, you don't want to create these divots that are going to reflect to the surface. You don't want to do that. That's my opinion. And um, Jamie says, my project, which has just a frame that needed to be refinished, this is the one we just saw. I've watched many of your videos, but don't entirely get the diamond tufting. Also, I'm sure there's a better way to carry the fabric from the tufting to the seat. So let's just 
this was uh, the chair, and I wanted to make a comment about this before he upholstered it. And and really, he did the he made the right decision. You guys, look at the tufting on that. That is not a deep tufting, and and I've never I don't think I've ever seen an East Lake furniture with with this type of tufting. Uh, if you're going to do it, you have to you have to really frame it out heavy. It has to be heavier than this. This looks like a machine a machine tufting. So somebody somebody might change that from the from the plane back that he put back on it. His looks much better than this. I've been glad he didn't try to do this because you need some you need some space to work real genuine hand tufting, tufted uh, diamond tufting needs some space. And it needs the proper material too. You need to use horses. There's no other way around it, you guys. Don't use foam when you're tufting. Foam will not, foam will not hold up. It won't. The the, the, the it doesn't look right. It, it, horse head rounds off the, the 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 top part of the button area, the pleat area, whereas foam collapses. But that's the problem. And you have a heck of a time doing foam, anything out of foam in tufting and deep tufting because of that, because it collapses on you. And, and even if you're using high density foam, or even firm foam, if you ask me, but who wants firm foam? Uh, you're using the medium foam, and that's gonna collapse on you. I won't do it, because I know that it, it's not gonna look right. Erica says, look, Kevin, when a piece is lived in and the fabric starts to loosen, does that mean it didn't make it tight enough for the first time? The first time? Is there anything I can do to fix it other than take apart from scratch? It depends on what she's, if she's talking about a crown seat, for instance, that that's been um, that's been upholstered depends on where it is, what it's doing. I mean, a cushion you can adjust, you can make adjustments to cushions, open it up, and put a new filling in there, or whatever. But for instance, if you're talking about a crown seat, uh, maybe she can elaborate on what part of the chair she's talking about. But um, there are some things that you can do that are that are kind of like hacks that you'd be surprised at. <laughs> One thing that uh, comes to mind, if you've got an inside back, an inside arm, or two inside arms, or an upholstered seat that's loose, um, what you can do is take a small fabric roll, not a big roll, but a small fabric roll, and push it in, in those areas. It's just a hack. I mean, it, if, if you've got it at home and you want to just make it look better. So the arms of the velvet sofa... T tell her what she could inside arms yeah. so what you can do i mean that's taking that apart is a real risk first of all it's risky because you have to be careful you might not have extra fabric and it's a lot of work so try this hack first take take a small fabric roll not the big ones but the smaller ones um cut it to fit the where the where the arm goes and push that in push that in and you'd be surprised how tight that might get those arms so give that a shot and before you tear it apart, that's what I would do. Um, now, some people would be critical of that. Some upholsters would be critical that they would call that. A, a, they would they would use that hack in a bad way. <laughs> um, but if a customer came to me and said, "Kevin, I want I want you to fix this," I would take the whole thing apart, tighten it up, and reupholster it. And I could do that. We've done that before. That's a lot of money. That's almost as much as doing the whole sofa over, over again, Patrick. Wow. Minus the fabric. A lot of posters don't like doing it because they're afraid. Of what happens if they rip the fabric? What happens if they're putting the inside arm back on and it rips all the way up? Then you're, then you're stuck, right? Exactly. Diana says, does anyone have an efficient way of removing staples from a groove? I've been using the groove staple lifter that is in this photo. It works sort of. Any other ideas? So I think I responded to this and I, I said, you don't have to get every staple first of all. Um, some of the deep staples, if you're, and you notice you guys, she's got a little bit of a problem here. She's got, it looks to me like she's got fabric on both sides of the groove, which, which is really difficult because both sides of that groove have a sharp edge of wood that you don't want to ding and damage. It's a disaster when you do that. You're going to see that. The fabric's going to look dinged. You can't do that. So she's, she's got a problem. So what I would say, what I said to her was, try to actually take a chisel. Um, you can ham, take the fabric off and hammer them back down. But when you're stapling, be be aware that the staples at the bottom of the gully, are, there, are still there, 
and that you have to turn your gun to avoid those staples either um, either side of the wall uh, of the groove. Do you know what I mean? You guys understand what I'm saying. But you have to kind of be like a MacGyver sometimes when you're doing this stuff. I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen a groove, this is probably a mod piece of furniture, uh, I don't think I've ever seen, well maybe one time, now that I think of it, on a parson arm, an upholstered parson arm, which is, a, they're really tough to do. I think she's got a tough job here. Uh, but on those, um, I would be very careful of the edges. I would be protecting the edges, even if it means leaving the staples in and then turning your gun to try to staple the new fabric on. Right? That's what I'm trying to say. Sorry, guys. I'm not. Just finished this chair. Took a while. The fabric I wanted. Pretty happy with the result. This is cool. This is from Maritza. Look at this, you guys. Hey, did you see that? Yeah, I got a lot of uh, likes. Now, I'm going to look at this chair. I want you to see something that she did on the arms. She actually, if you see that, okay, if, you, if you're looking at this, Patrick, see how she's got her pleats on the front of the arm, on the top of the arms? She, right. It almost looks like a heart shape. That she's not hot, but it, it looks it looks hot shape. She's got both pleats on either side. She's got uh, she took the time and the care to do that. Do you see that? Yeah, I hope people can see that. So she's she's, that she's good. She's really good. You guys check out the Facebook. Yeah, you might be able to see it on yeah. on the Facebook about it. But she did a great job. She said she's happy. She should be happy. That looks great. The I figure out a new system for this because when I post this on there, it makes everything go slower. That's why I don't do it. I wish they could see. Go on the yeah, definitely go on the forum. She's matched get it. a close, better view. Wonderful, too. So, Allison, thank you, Allison. She's a good supporter, Patrick. She's got a question regarding jute webbing. In one of your YouTube videos, Kevin, you cut the old straps when stripping the chair. I just did the same on the chair picture. Do I need to remove the ends completely before adding new straps? I don't believe you did in the video, and I thought that was a brilliant idea. What a time saver that would be, plus less stress on an old chair. That's why I probably did it. I, I sometimes make those decisions. I have two horsehair slip seats at the shop now, for instance, that they're, they're over 200 years old, the frame. They're just small chairs, and they are really fragile. The customer is an older customer, and she just doesn't use them. She has them on either side of a, of a, of a banquette or something, and, and she just wants them covered. But I, I still have to do a proper job because they're all caved in. They're all horsehair, horsehair fabric and horsehair. So I'm trying to do a really low impact job as much as possible. So I'm going to upholster it from the, I'm going to web it from the bottom. I don't even want to touch the frames on these. I don't want to touch, I don't want to take too many tacks out. That's how old they are. And, and you know, in keeping with, I'm not, fa I'm not failing that I'm doing anything improper because I'm keeping, it's a family heirloom. So we're keeping the horse hair. I'm keeping the top cover. I can't, I can't, I don't even want to touch it. But I'm going to do a good job with the new fabric. She's going to be happy. And it's kind of like, that's what museums do. Museums will go over a piece to save the integrity of the history of the piece. So um, in this case here, it looks like um, that might make good sense because it's an older piece. But sometimes I cut, let me just show you guys. Sometimes I, I cut like that in order to roll off the webbing with a pair of pliers, not my side cutters, with the regular pair of pliers, to make it easier to take off. You know, that, that, that's an easier way than to try to tackle every single stable by itself. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's, it's, a, it's a case by case on that. It's a case by case. Brad King. I want to update uh, for Randy's previous post. Okay. Uh, solve the issue by filling the groove with weld cord, upholster it over, and move the weld cord to the outside edge. He did that. Yep, oh, that was his. Uh, was that his song. project? Was that? Was, yeah, that was. Uh, who who's that? His wife, right? Oh, oh, right. Oh, so, so that customer was okay with that. The customer he probably, solved it. The customer probably. That's a good solve, you guys. Let me just hold that up again to show. So he covered that. He covered the groove and then went to the outside with the piping. That's what he yeah, said. That's what he said. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for Randy for for clarifying. I think we said we answered that last two weeks ago. We did. Or so we might have. I think. <laughs> well, I don't think we got the. But, uh, I don't think we got his. But now we got the update. So yeah. Good. Brad says, "What is the best way to remove double piping besides just pulling it off without damaging the fi the finish?" Well, so it. So remember, you guys, there are at least three ways. 
three ways of of four ways of putting double piping on. So I, he doesn't spe Brad doesn't specify which one was his. So one is sometimes you can staple double welt on with big staples with the half inch staples with with it depends on the fabric. Sometimes on pieces I do that because I don't trust that the glue's going to hold, especially in areas that get a lot of hand you know holding. So I, I will do that. Um, Hot glue is usually the method. A good hot glue gun. We've talked about that, you guys. An epoxy. Some people use epoxies, which I don't like. And Elmer's glue. So if it's Elmer's glue, you got a little bit of a problem because Elmer's glue, um, th that's actually was an old traditional way of doing it. And we used to pin tack it on and keep it there for 24 hours. And that would, that would glue together like a piece of wood. And so that's a problem. That, if, it's, if it is, I can't tell. If that's what it is, um, if that's what it is, you just have to take it really slow. Um, I don't know if anybody out there could tell me if, uh, if they can use on Elmer's glue some type of solvent. Uh, you have to be careful because he's got a nice finished piece of wood. This is the concern, you guys, got that nice fish, finished wow, piece nice of wood. Nice glow song. <laughs> so um, if it's hot glue, it would be the best thing. And he just takes his glue gun, make sure it's empty, make sure there's no glue sticks in your glue gun, and then reheat the glue. And start, and you hold one hand up here with the with the double piping, and you you're reheat, reheating the glue will come right off without pulling any of the finish off. So you're you're hoping that they have used hot glue on that. That's the best. And by the way, he's he's got a uh, a cut velvet a corduroy. It's a corduroy, and I I find that corduroy really really is tough to take double piping off. So I know what the problem is. But the, the glue gun, it looks like it's hot glue. He should be okay. Brad, maybe Brad can uh, update us on that one if he's watching. Any other? Oh, look at this. This is interesting, you no, guys. I keep going, don't they? <laughs> Don Day, uh, he says, I'm just a beginner, and he's posted a picture. Jimmy actually commented on that one. Jimmy's with us now? No, no, on that post. He said, great job. He says, I'm just a beginner, and he's, got his, endorsement. he's got his sign up here upholstery shop and he's got this feature in his upholstery shop to a shout out what's it called it's a shop called it's called um dnl restoration what i find interesting is there's no exchange on that it's just a, a seven digit phone number it's kind of like old-fashioned old school yeah. right, Patrick? So we have no idea without the exchange i have no you idea you mean the area code yeah i don't even know what, i never heard that term exchange well, I think it's calling. <laughs> maybe you know Eric is probably saying, "What's he talking about?" Because she's saying, "What are you <laughs> I'm not sure. They have country codes that we'd have to put punch in for Australia, but so it's a seven-digit number. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, maybe maybe it's not in the U.S. You know what? I bet. Can I see it? Why don't you Google it? DNL Restoration. See, see where he is. Well, he's got three and four. Looks like it should be. Anyway, the shout out there. People can. Check yep. So Mary, Nico. Mary, Nico's here. Can you do her, hers with the bottom. I think so. That's good hers timing. Is, yeah. Oh yeah, hers is the last one. Stay tuned. Mary Kay has another uh, comment on here or, or project. Hi, I was out of town for a bit and missed the last two question and answer session. Thanks for the compliments on my last project. I found another interesting rocking chair to work on. The owner is excited to have received her grandmother's rocker. Her granny grew up on the island off the coast of Maine. And the story is that the chair was rescued from a shipwreck. This is cool. My friend remembers the chair covered in leather, but is currently in blue gingham, and she wants to return it to leather. Fortunately, it can be taken apart to be worked on, so that much easier than my last two projects. The springs look poorly tied and loops-sided, which explains why it's uncomfortable um, to sit in. I think I will put in new webbing and new springs. My friend is insistent on recovering in leather and I've not attempted that yet so you can point me to where I might find some info or what pitfalls to avoid or am I being too worried well I can tell you that I'm not doing leather or full leather anymore I've just had it with the industry both industries and um, we used to get really nice Italian leather I, I'm sure you can still get Italian leather out there but I think the industry's changed too much full leather forget it um, if you're going to do it, do it in real leather. But um, leather work, Mary Kay, is much different, as you might have guessed, than, 
than fabric. You need you need a little bit more pulling strength to, to do leather. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible. Uh, this looks like a stickly. I'll, I'll, let me show you guys. So she's got a drop. This is really interesting. If you guys look at this, uh, part of it's dropping, and it looks like she's missing uh, one of the one of the uh, strappings, one of the metal strappings on the upper springs. You can see she's got the metal strapping on the bottom one. That this is probably uh, contributing to the the very uncomfortable seating that she has. She may want to. She's got a she's got a pretty substantial. Um, seat on that uh, a wood frame so maybe she can she could go traditional on this uh, if she's going to do that I, I think she should get rid of the drop-in uh, part of it the metal strap and and go to a number one spring and the webbing on the bottom of the frame and then just go through that process I think uh, hope that's a good good way of doing it um, oh she goes on to say my friend no I think that's it Okay, now wow, Nico. More, huh? Nick, well, Nico's got two. Oh, yeah, that's right. So Nico says on this one, um, so I trimmed the top to meet up with the sides, and it's too tight. My plan is to flip the second one first, and if there is, I think she's. Yeah, I think you might want to do the other one first. Oh. I, I think. Is no. Oh, that's a different one. Well, let's do that one first, because that's, that's a cool one. Hubby claimed it for the living room. Still need to staple the base. Many thanks for the encouragement. That one's cool, yeah. I think she's talking about the semi-attached cushion there, right? And that chair in the back. I remember the chair from a different one. Her creation. Yeah, yeah. The semi-attached cushions, we talked, is one of the hardest things to do, right? I just delivered one that I did. It came out really nice. A lot of times, it's up to the fabric, too. The fabric, uh, sometimes fabrics don't really work well with the semi-attached cushion. That looks really good. Her corners are nice and straight. And she's got that nice contrasting piping. That's nice. Nice job, Nico. And so this one here, let's read this one. It's an update from a question that she might have had. Um, okay, let me read the um, first one first, which is on here. Hi, folks. Working on this ottoman with storage. The base is done and looks great. With stapling the lid in place, when I noticed the corners didn't look right, it, it I took it off. Tried to just fix the corners, but ended up taking it all apart. Now when I go to sew the top to the sides, it doesn't line up like it should. Um, I, it didn't the first time either. The top is too wide, so when I get to the corners, the edges don't align. Ever since taking it all the way apart, I remeasuring using the original piece, and, and it's still off. Please help. The math is not mathing. So this is where your your patience come in, comes into play, I guess. Um, so she, she updated it. She said, so I trimmed the top to meet up with the sides and it's too tight. My plan is to flip the second one first and if there's fabric left over, redo the lid. I am open to suggestions. So she, she's struggling with the, the top, top cushion. So, you know, you know, guys, sometimes it comes down to your equipment. Um, this is where a walking foot would probably come in handy. Um, you know, if you don't have a walking foot machine, like this machine over here, this Juki machine is not a walking foot that I use. And that's all I use. I don't have a walking foot. Randy might be surprised at that. But I don't do a lot of leathers and faux leathers. If I did, I would need one. She's a better close-up on there if you guys want to check it out. Um, so, so, a walking foot will save a lot of aggravation because the fabrics are being pulled at the same time and you don't have to worry too much about um, that problem. When you're using the when you're using a machine that's a non-walking foot, your sewing skills are a little bit more. You have to pay attention to those things when, in regards to your corners. Says so which Juki? Uh, this Juki. This Juki is the DDL five 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 zero, which is a great machine. It's actually that machine there is a teaching machine. Um, and it's made to, for uh, students to learn how to sew and to not have a machine that's too complex. And, that, and uh, actually, it, it helped me too because I, it has a reverse. Um, the singers that I grew up, I, I had, the old singers I had, didn't have reverses. Um, and and they, were, they were so troubled. Uh, a lot could go wrong with the singer. The timing on 
the timing mechanism, the timing on a, on a singer would always go off. You'd have to constantly have people, mechanics. I don't know too many upholsters that were good at doing the timing on a machine, although there, there were a couple. But we would have to have mechanics come in. We were, we were pretty, you know, savvy, but... Um, for the timing, you'd have to have a mechanic come in, and they they would they would come in, and they they would charge you, and they would always be seeming like they would go out of timing um, very easily. When you have more than one person on a machine, that's common, because um, everybody sells differently. But these jukies, you can have ten people on this machine, and and wow. timing would be fine. Wow. So, any questions or answers, questions, Patrick, um, or comments? Nico says thank you. Okay, I hope that was a help. It's. It's hard sometimes when the, you don't physically have the piece in front of you, right, Patrick? Yeah, exactly. Okay, we should get to Michaela, Man, Patrick. We're, a lot, a lot. we're yeah. an, hour, an hour and ten minutes, but we owe everybody some extra right. time here. Cause. Right, we should get Michaela in here because people like this segment, which is the um, se the estimating, especially for people like, um, what was the name? Well, everybody on here looks like they're... they're uh, charging there for their services here. Everyone on Facebook here looks like they're they're taking jobs on and so this is always good for people to understand pricing at least from this part of the country. So the says the Juki 1541 is also a walking foot. Your flashlight is on. My flashlight's <laughs> on? Oh, okay. <laughs> We don't want so I guess that. another model that has the same. Yeah, the Juki has a, a walking foot model, right? And the Juki, just quickly on the Juki, um, Juki is an overseas uh, manufacturer, and they reverse engineered the Singers, and they took the best components of the Singers, and they and and they just re-engineered it. The biggest thing about the Juki is the self. I, I've mentioned this before, which is genius is the well underneath, it's a self-oiling machine from the bottom, and you don't have to oil the top. That is huge. That is the one reason why they, they outdid Singer, but <clears throat> because when you're oiling, you get uh, fabric with oil on it, it's a disaster, especially white, lighter colored fabrics. There's at least four places, three or four places on the Singer that you'd have to oil from the top, <coughs> constantly too, by the way. Okay, so what do we got, Michaela? First one from 3:45 p.m. Charlotte. Okay, you can read that. It's that second email. Do you want to read it? Hello, I am looking for either a slip cover or an upholstery of a chair I have. It is a classic IKEA chair that we like the chair but we don't love the color or fabric of the chair we've also had a stain or two happen so we are looking to refresh the chair with a new look here's the chair for reference and there's a link if you want to click that i'm going to and I I'd, I'd love to get a quote on what it would cost to get either a slip cover or upholstery would we need to buy our own fabric or do you have fabrics you can offer thanks we would like to sell our own fabric. Do they have? <laughs> okay, it's good. It's always good when people ask that question. And and this is going to be interesting from a price point standpoint. You know, this chair they got a price here is three sixty nine, three hundred sixty nine dollars. You guys, okay? So there you go. So there's no way I'm going to get this job, but we'll be polite because I don't think that she's going to like any of the pricing on this. She could replace it for three hundred sixty nine dollars. <laughs> That's a fully upholstered wing chair. It's a fully upholstered wing chair for three sixty nine. How do they do that? I mean, when you when you have the shipping costs, it's probably very cheap materials. It, it's very cheap, definitely. And and you know that's another factor. And is she gonna do it over again? Because you know, uh, so we're just gonna you know let's pretend like we didn't see the IKEA and just give her the price. It's gonna be twelve hundred dollars for us to labor to upholster it plus. Seven yards. So it, it would be the same either way, slip cover. Yeah, or the so you could say it's going to be well. You know, yeah, it, could, it would be a little bit less on the on the slip cover, but it would be more fabric, so it, it comes out the same. You could just say it's the same price. I don't think we're going to get. You know, I don't want to go too deep into this, and I don't want to spend too much time on it. But I do want to be courteous. You guys, this is really important to to answer every every. Try to answer. How many yards? Seven yards. Do 
But you never know. She might like the chair so much and she doesn't want to throw it away. Some people, are, I've been hearing a lot lately, I don't want to throw this out into the landfill. I know this is going to be more money than buying a new one, but I'm going to put this in the landfill. So people are starting to click on the ecology um, and the recycling aspects, which is good for us in the upholstery business. I don't use it as a sales pitch much anymore. I used to. Not anymore. Uh, the next one is... Yeah, I agree with Randy. Sorry, I'm going on. He said he had, he had disposable furniture. It's yeah. gross, too. I know, I got that couch. Remember, that was, I mean, I hate to be so yeah. negative, but it was awful. Yeah. Next one is Alea. Okay. Four dining chairs. So we did these chairs about seven years ago, and they're ready to be done again. Hi, Kevin. I hope this email finds you well. I would like to reupholster my four dining chairs again. I brought them to you six or seven years ago, and it's time go. to reupholster again. You may want to see attached photos of my chairs. Please get back to me with labor costs. We just charged three hundred dollars each for these for chairs very similar to this, so we'll go in with that price three hundred each, plus you know let's say a yard and a half a piece. So she needs a total of six yards. Now I'm gonna put you on the spot, Dad. Is that what? a normal amount of time where something would need to be upholstered seven years? Is that well, good? well, I was going to comment on that. On it depends on the fabric, but so it wasn't you. <laughs> I, I would say that on dining room chairs, I, I usually tell people it depends on the furniture, but on living room furniture that's moderately used, you, you're looking at 15 years. You hope Fine. Um, so this might have had not abused. This have a lot of use. This had a lot of use, and and you know during COVID, it got much people use this stuff. So um, in other words, it was a. Well, you know, they don't look like they're in bad shape. You know, let me let me sure. just show let me just show you guys. There's no tearing or anything. It could be a case where she's just tired of the color, maybe. Did she mention that they were stained? Did she said they were stained? No, nope, just says it's time to reupholster again. She doesn't give a reason, Patrick. Patrick thought right away that it was yeah, a poor, you, poor yeah. work. Ah, it sounds tired. like it's just a color change. <laughs> They look like they're still in, they look like, first of all, they look like an ultra suede, and they look like they're the day that I did them. I don't remember them. Okay. And. And then the last one, there's a, a set of um, three. The one that pops up it's from february 26 name is daniel okay so it's that first email is one of them okay so it looks like a wing chair is, <coughs> excuse is that me also a reclining wing chair yeah i mean we'll do this it's just these are these are a bear to do you guys if you've ever done a recliner you'll know what i mean uh, a lot of moving parts <laughs> And uh, the things about recliners, it might be working when you pick it up, but it would be just your luck that uh, the mechanism uh, goes while you're working on it or shortly after you've upholstered it. So you have to be careful. I mean, I, I, I would check it out really well. We will give an estimate on recliners because they're so saturated, the market's so saturated with them. They're low in price. Um, so usually I don't get what I want we don't get recliners because of that. So we'll give a, a price of $1,400. It's a little bit more than a regular wing chair. It's a wing chair recliner, if you notice. Um, and nine yards of fabric. Another thing about recliners is make sure you get enough fabric. There's a lot of hidden, there's a lot of pieces in there underneath that you still need to use. You know, you got two foot pads and then a and then two pe probably two pieces of fabric underneath that um, I used to hide the mechanism. So there's a lot of fabric. All right, and then the second one. Um, uh, hold on. So this one is weird. So this the second one they actually never included an email address. And they didn't include pictures or number of dining chairs that they need. 
put a, nothing, no so way to get. Really a, no information that we can give. Okay. And you would need to call this person. Oh, do they have a phone number? Yeah. Can you text me their phone number just to remind me? Because I won't see this. There's another person also that did not send in an email. Oh, you know what this is? I'll tell you what this is. We have to get. Um, you always have to be on the ball. So, Yelp. I I have Yelp. Um, I do pay for my advertising on Yelp, which this is a debate. These are coming in from Yelp. These these messages are coming in from Yelp, which just pitches in a phone number. Because they've already messaged. And I I got to get them to to pull the messaging off Yelp. It's a pain because it's it they they. It's just it's hard to explain, but I've been asking people who are messaging me of through Yelp to send a picture, and I give them my phone number. So that's what this is, I think. Or is it? I don't know. Wouldn't I be getting a direct if that was the case? <laughs> Patrick, will you will you make a note to take care of this? Yeah. This messaging on, it has to be, we need to dis, disable the messaging on No, that's it's, what I'm saying. I've, and we're going to get a bad review because I, I don't answer them right away, too. The way they come in, it's weird. So we don't want a bad review because we're really good about answering. That's what we're doing now. We're answering. We don't let it go too long. You know, businesses that do that, usually you usually get bad reviews, and I don't want a bad review. And there's another one um, that you tried to respond to as well. It came back. It but bounced it back. it came back because they didn't. I don't know how yeah. they sent us the email, yeah. but it doesn't look like it's a correct email. I mean, the only problem with this is, you know, on the on their end, they might not know what's going on, so they're gonna get they're gonna get mad, and they might post a bad review saying, "Oh, today don't ever get back to you," which is which would be bad. And I'm pretty sure this is because of the the messaging uh, um, on the on the Yelp. I take care of that. Is that it, or is there another one? I think that's, uh, I think that's it. Uh, let's see. So there's one more um, that you responded to a while ago, or not a while ago, a few days ago. Um, they're just looking for the phone. So just to double check, it's this Valerie. Valerie. It's from February 24th. Okay, I mean, we do... Hi, these are my dining room chairs that I mailed about earlier. Is that it? And yeah. the last time they were done, the seat cushions were taken down in height because there wasn't enough fabric. I think they need to be fuller, but not sure if possible. Would you agree? Is she asking just for the foam? So, this? yeah, I think so, because she says, I think I, had, I think I said I had eight chairs. I only have six. And then you, you responded saying... We can add fill $150 each and three yards total. And did she didn't respond so to that? She said, what is the price without fabric? I'd like to, I'd like help with just the padding. Yeah, we won't do that. We, we can't just do the padding. We, we need to do the whole chair. Somebody came in the other day, um, a DIY person, and I'm, I'm always kind and, and helpful, but they, they had a cushion. Uh, they they re, redid a sofa, and they had a long bench cushion. He came in, he says he has the fabric and he has the foam. <laughs> I said, well, he just took two of the three things that I try to make money on. You know, I try to make money on fabric. We try to make a little money on the foam. So the last thing he wanted was the expertise of the labor, which really doesn't do me much good, to be honest with you guys. You know, and I try to be accommodating, but, you know, and I gave him some advice on how to sew it. But, you know, it just doesn't pay uh, for me. To, first of all, I'd have this big cushion. I wouldn't make any money on it. Um, but, you know, you, you can't, you don't go to an audible bail mechanic with your own pots. Uh, <laughs> Why? I got to interrupt. Why? We just bought a bumper. We're going to be doing the same thing. <laughs> uh, well, you're doing the labor yourself, though. Yeah, right? I can't. It's winter. I thought I was going to be able to. Yeah, you can take it to that place. Though. So, we you doing the <laughs> I don't know if you're going to find anybody to do it. Uh, I just think it's, you know, it's similar to that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I got you there. <laughs> Although I'm doing it, it's not you. You're going to have to find somebody I'll take to do the it. Blame for that. <laughs> Although, 
different, but what if they, what if they have a specialty part like we got for upholstery? It depends on the I got the a mechanic. specialty part. It isn't a. It isn't a. It isn't like a, a, a Ford. It's not a Ford part. It's an aftermarket. Well, you know, they, they like to make, well, you know, when you, you go to a mechanic, it's like us. What if somebody came to you with something that was you couldn't get, you've never seen it, they already have it, and you couldn't get it? What if it was some sort of rare, you know what I mean? I don't know. There's, I, no, there's no circumstance that that would happen. In, in this case, two out of the three things, two out of the three things that we make money on were taken away right in the very get-go. So the last thing was the labor. You know, he was a nice guy, but, you know, I said to him, I said, you know, maybe next time you'll... So, in other words, the labor would have to be, like, extraordinary. I didn't even get to that point because I knew that it wasn't, you know, he wouldn't have paid that. But, you know, you try to be courteous, whatever. So, are there any other business, Patty? How many subscribers do we have? Oh, we're getting... We should be at 22 by now. Yeah. Any other business? I I just... We've been so... Slow with our uploads. We gotta upload more stuff, and that one that horsehair video. Oh, maybe we'll do the horsehair video as a YouTube video. Okay. Yeah, that's what All I right. Was, and right. then and you updated the, the ribbon chair. You you posted that yeah. and updated it. We got a picture of anyone see the Instagram. The final picture is up there. Okay. You guys want to check that out? Good. Any other news? Um, except for Jimmy losing the orange line on the highway. Yeah. I don't think so. Well, what's the <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it then. So you guys, uh, if there's if there's nothing else, Patrick, we're yeah, we went for an hour and thirty minutes. I said we made up for our. I hope so. Two week absence. I hope so. I hope that uh, we were really rushed today. I, I I've been working from right from the early morning until now. So thanks, guys, yeah. for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.